we're live. What's up, guys? We are on our way to the farm. We're going to weed out the turmeric beds, maybe see if there's any bananas ready. Probably harvest some yucca for our festivities tonight. And uh, just do a little observation walkthrough. We also planted some mushrooms over there, like just some spores in the ground. So we'll see if it popped. And uh, yeah, we'll see you over there. What's up guys, we're here. We're at the farm, love it here. I don't come here too much summertime because a lot of set it and forget it crops. Forget about it. Look at the loofahs. Summertime, I love summer because everything grows so quickly. Like the stuff you want to get to grow. But the weeds also grow just as fast. So that's the bummer. Wow, look at these plants though. These are those blue turmeric we did that video on. That black one, but it's like blue on the inside. Isn't that beautiful, that leaf? So we're gonna come in here and weed out all these morning glories. Do you see it? So it's gonna get even crazier. It's cool, they're growing right under this yucca. And then we'll harvest this soon and then these will kinda take the space. But we have so much in the ground right now. It's like all turmeric and yucca and taro, really. And some rogue pigeon piece. So this is also some, uh, I think some pumpkins we planted. And then we got watermelons coming too. Check it out. I think Tali and I are actually gonna do a video on that. This is our fruit tree nursery. These are our avocados, these are our mangoes. And we've got a whole bunch here. We're so lucky it's kind of really close to the water. So the fruit trees really like it. They don't get a lot of problems, fungus and all sorts of stuff. So we have all these fruit trees to plant for people. A lot of people sometimes say, I want the biggest tree ever. Like, get me the biggest tree. So it's producing right away. But actually, the, you really want to start with a tree, kind of a smaller tree, so it can adapt to the space. Like, it might not have fruits that first season, but two or three years, like you'll start to get fruits, but more importantly, your fruit tree will be resilient and have strong root system and kind of go the distance. Sometimes you plant too big of a tree, like there's a really nice 015 mango right here, you see? But it's kind of been in that pot a while. Those roots, they say you want like the roots to match the tree, like the pot, like look how small that pot is compared to the tree. So it's not optimal, like I'm sure it'll do great mangoes do great but uh really you want to start with the little guy and let him adapt to the space but anyways yeah so that's like why we keep kind of this size tree and we're kind of cycling them out and getting them in the ground for people check out this holy basil real quick look at the lizard chilling <laughs> anyways could have been more graceful on my end <laughs> so this is another tulsi variety look it's coming up everywhere here comes the guys in the squeaky wheelbarrows. That's how you know we're on the scene. But look at this oregano just going off still, like middle of summer. And then there's skull cap growing in it. This is actually a medicinal plant and these flowers become purple, they're so pretty. So it's just kind of like a medicinal, like there's stuff interspersed all around here. You know, I like having rows and like all arugula, or all yucca, like and getting a lot of abundance, but I like to, tucking herbs just like around, you know, here and there. Look at those tobaccos. So look at these tobacco plants. So check it out. These, oh my goodness. This literally happened the last month or two. Unbelievable. My friend got me these seeds from the Amazon. Uh, he goes to the Amazon like all the time. And so I, I'm so privileged we had these seeds and we got to grow them out. And you know, I don't smoke tobacco, but it's kind of a cool, it's kind of cool to have, you know? Like true tobacco. It's funny, we stigmatize, we like say some things are bad, you know? Like tobacco is bad, but 
You know what I mean? I think it's just like usage and, and awareness. And I think we might just not understand it. Sometimes when we say it's bad or we, we just don't understand it totally. Like it's a plant, you know? Maybe we're just abusing it or, you know, maybe we're looking at it differently. I was like, dude, how do you grow tobacco? When he gave me this and he said, you literally treat it like tomato, any like, like a plant in your garden. So that's what I've been doing and it's been crushing. Like I've done it the last couple of years. Just drip irrigation and fertilizer and sun. And look, we got Jules of Opar coming up. This is one of the best greens. This just comes up every year and you literally, it's like in that Suriname spinach family, but this one's an annual. So it's going to seed, you see? So we'll go to seed, come up again next year. This one's good. I wish it was more productive, like longevity spinach, but I enjoy it when I get it. Oh man, dude, the guy's found. Cherries. Spot. The highest vitamin C source you can grow. Good find. <gasps> <laughs> wow, these bees love these flowers too. Oh, cool, at the cell? Yeah. Yeah, let's get that. Oh yeah, it's my machete. Guys, doesn't it feel like a rainforest over here? It really does. Doesn't it? Yeah. Like, it's like 10 degrees warmer and humid, yeah. more humid. Calm free, isn't that cool? Huge. It's yeah. huge, it's a bio accumulator, so it, it makes like Mexican sunflower, you know, chop and drop. Yeah. They use that to chop and drop up north, but it's growing well here in the shade. It's like a plant for like New York or, you know, a northern plant, but it makes really good soil. So we'll feed the trees with it, you know. We got shampoo ginger. Remember when we found this last year? Yeah. <laughs> so dude, these turn yellow. This is the flower of this ginger and it turns red it starts green but this will turn red you see that it produces this juice that you make shampoo out of it smells amazing but it's better when it's like red bright red you're like what look at that it's like unlimited amounts yeah it's dude you guys should come smell it you know it's like how would we be able to moisturize without cvs <laughs> jacob in the spa <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Look at these bananas. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, there's like 10 along here. <laughs> but you see the difference? Like, look how small that rack is. I think this is a tall Orinoco. They make plantains or they can make the, the really good smoothie bananas. But look how small that is compared to this ice cream tall, tall Namwa one. There's like 200 on that one. So like, you know, it's all about growing the one that, you know, we plant the really good ones for people. It's about figuring out which variety produces and bring it to the people. Weeds. Spinach. So when we're planting food, the first thing before we feed ourselves is we gotta feed the soil. So check it out. I started feeding the soil like a couple years ago and now it's insane, dude. Check it out. So we came in with mulch and like, look at all that mycorrhizal, but look. This is what makes all the bananas happen, you know? Look at this, what? So, look, we can't even find the sand that it used to be. Look at that. You see that? Literally worm castings. You could sell this $30 a little bag and it just, you know, makes more of it the more you feed it. So that's step number one. Build soil, then uh, grow calories. Nice. Eating all my mangoes. Urban farmer gone aggressive. So this is the beautiful Katuk tree Tali did a video on. These papayas putting on fruit. This is that really good one you, Leanne, and I had. Yeah. They're not as good here as they are in like Hawaii or somewhere. They're so good there. Yeah, look how good the African potato mint looks, you know? That could totally be like along someone's pathway. It's a perennial and it makes potatoes. Kind of lit. Look, we got another mango, coconut cream. The key is planting. The chop and drop king. Mr. Mexican Sunflower. <laughs> Mr. Mexican Sunflower. The Mexican Sunflower, mighty as she is, 
standing tall. Look at the star for insane. The abundance is real. Long-term ROI for the fruit trees. <laughs> this is curry leaf. Yams trying to take over. That could be a huge yam harvest. It's like Jurassic Park over here. So we planted mushrooms. It doesn't look like they came up yet. Check it out, this right here. This is Costas, spiraling ginger is what it's known as. My friend Andy collects them like the biggest nerd, but he's awesome, dude. And what's cool about them is they're so pretty. You'll see them all around. But these petals that come off of them, pop them off. There's sometimes ants on them because they're so sweet. Oh my God, so good. It tastes like green apples or something. Hey, what's up guys? So I'm back at the shop and uh, my buddy Noah's coming over. He's a grower from down in a uh, Boca area, super talented. And he helped me plant some mushrooms here, kind of put some in the ground that some, some oats that he inoculated in the ground. So we're going to go and check on them and just kind of chop it up. Thanks for coming up, bro. Of course. Yeah, they're totally coming up. Yeah. These, you can tell the difference. This is when they get kind of too wet. Yes. This, this is pretty perfect. So is this. This is what you're looking for. But dude, this is exactly what you're looking for, right? Yeah. So if you want to pick it. No way. Yeah. It's already ready? It's ready, yeah. What? <laughs> cool, man. Perfect. It's beautiful. Wow. You can see right here, it probably dropped some spores. Cool. Already, you can see some babies coming up. See those? Wow. Those are the spores that yeah. dropped already. Mm -hmm. They're wow. very, very fast. We did this like two weeks ago. Unbelievable. Yeah. Pink oysters. So the timing's really important. Yeah. And, and growing outside is, it's a hit or miss. Like if we would have done this maybe a week later than we would have done it, it could have been completely different. There could have been a lot more. It could have been a lot less. So. Totally. Yeah. This one looks really good. And these could have been ready maybe, but we got hit by so much rain in yep, the last. Exactly. These they, ones actually kind of look like they dried out. So they've got too wet. But you can still use these ones. Really? Yeah. They're just not like appealing to the eye. Yeah, probably better in like a soup. And you can see there's, this was on the bottom, but it's very, very pretty. The gills. Wow. No one I actually got in touch because he was like, hey, I know how to basically do mushrooms outdoors. Like, you want to like learn about it? And that's how we got connected, you know? Because yeah. I've always been like, oh, I love doing mushrooms, but usually they do it in plastic bags inside. Yeah. Just a lot of energy and like, you know. A lot of waste. A lot of waste, that's the word. Mm -hmm. And Noah does it outdoors, which is, like he said, totally closed loop. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the mycelial connection that you'll get in the soil is you can't buy that. It's like, I mean, it's so amazing. That's it, man. That's why I suggest people to do it in ground yeah, yeah. because I'm like, hey, you could really give your plants what they really need, like the habitat yeah. environment they really need, like that our bodies are used to too. Yeah. That's so interesting, bro. You literally can't buy that. Yeah. In, the, in the very beginning when there wasn't any plants, the mushroom mycelium, the plants copy the mushroom mycelium and uh, their roots are very similar, so that's how plants got their roots and started to dig down into the soil. Before that, they didn't do that. They just kind of stumbled over, didn't have any structure. But they copied the mycelium and they're like, the mycelium's doing it, the mushrooms are doing it. And they started doing it and that's why we have plants. So mushrooms are to thank for all the plants that we have. Dude, you see what we uh, did with the jicama? Looks great. A little trellis, yeah. we did that yesterday. Awesome. Thank you, dude. I mean, we could just come into these, just with spores, and this is perfect for them. Amazing. Like, right, like if there's a rainstorm coming, we'll just come in with some grain. And then the really cool thing about that is even if no mushrooms fruit, this will change into mushroom compost in months, shorter than a month, probably three weeks after the, the spores are inoculated into this straw, it'll just become black. 
Because it breaks it down quick. It breaks quick. it down quick. Wow. Quick, quick. And then you can just integrate it into the beds. All right. It's getting eaten by something, but it's still flowering. That's a really good sign. It's Korean melons. So this thing, someone gave me a little seedling of this when they came to visit. And then I traded them a bunch of plants too. So this was a gift. So it's like a cucumber mixed with a cantaloupe. It's like sweet and it's also kind of mild. Cheers. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. So we got these mushrooms here, beautiful pink oyster mushrooms. So we'll chop off this uh, dirt end and the little, there's a tough spot right here. We'll chop that up and then we'll fry them up, a little salt, give a good taste, taste the mushroom flavor. Really good in like pasta, just fry up some mushrooms. So a really cool way you can use this like chicken because the texture of it, as you can see, when you pull it apart, very meaty, not really similar to a lot of mushrooms you buy at the store, like button mushrooms. There's, you, there's shreds, so it's like has a chicken texture. So you can marinate it just how you would, whatever you like. I usually do hot sauce um, and milk, almond milk. And then I make a seasoned flour and I just dredge and then fry it up, deep fry it, put it on a sandwich, eat it, eat it as is. And it's so meaty. It has a, it's a very mild flavor. I usually didn't like mushrooms at all, like from the store, but there's, it's just so mild, this flavor, and it's so meaty and tasty and, and like tender, can't beat it. And you can shred this like that and put it in like a stew and they're very good for you. They're dry weight and proteins like 19 or 22%. A lot of vitamin A. My background in permaculture, I, I did a, a permaculture mission in Thailand and we built a um, permaculture plot for these school children. And um, that got me into permaculture, but mushrooms are a very, very important part of our ecosystem and our soil. A lot of the, the agricultural practices that are going around now destroy the mycelial ne networks that are in the ground, um, which are very, very vital. That relationship, the mycorrhizal relationship is very, very important. My girlfriend actually got a bag, a grow bag from a farmer's market. And I was like, this is awesome. Just like, mushrooms coming out of a bag. So we were like, how do we do this at home? Well, thanks to Paul Stamets, he's a really well-known mycologist. He invented this way of growing mushrooms for, for everybody, a really basic way of doing it. Because normally mushrooms are grown in these big cellars there's a lot of technique involved, a lot of HEPA filters. There's like thousands of dollars you have to spend in order to get a mushroom. But his method, you just basically get a jar, a mason jar, and you inoculate grain, bird seed, rye berries, oats. You can use it a lot. You grow the mycelium and you broadcast it in your garden bed. That looks good. Like they're, they're oyster mushrooms, they have a very oyster oceany smell to them. That doesn't taste like oysters at all. Um, it's just their smell they give off. But that smells like you're frying fish to me. And pink oysters are the best to grow, in my opinion, in general, because of how resilient they are to everything. They've, they've put burnt uh, used cigarette butts in a bag and grown mushrooms on them, or pink oyster mushrooms. And the mushroom was like, this is toxic stuff. And they learned to use that toxic stuff to grow. So they're like very, very resilient. There's research going on about using pink oyster mushrooms to clean up oil spills. There's bags, they line um, the sides of banks with mushroom bags to, to use the oil as nutrients. They can just kind of learn to use like toxic stuff to grow, which is awesome. And there's, there's a lot of different uh, types of oyster mushrooms. There's blue, pink, golden, which are really cool. Try that one right there. Good? Yeah. Oh my God. It's what? like the best freaking kid's meal you'll ever have in your <laughs> life. <laughs> and it's healthy. Yeah. But there's, there's not like an off mushroom flavor to it, right? No. Very clean, super, mild. Super, super nice. Cool guys, thank you for uh, watching and uh, Noah, thanks for coming out. We'll see you next time.